the infamous push-up. How do you do push-ups? What are the benefits of push-ups? Should you do push-ups? How often should you do push-ups? I get a lot of questions about push-ups, and I've never dedicated a whole episode to them, but I'm going to do that in this episode. So strap in, get ready for episode 220. Let's go. The future of fitness. How do you gain muscle mass? Fitness is not complicated. It's simple when you break it down. There's so much information out there. No fads, no diets, just plain, simple habits. You're listening to the Bones to Bulk podcast. Hey, welcome to today's episode. My name is Brian Parody. I will be your host today. And if this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the show. So glad you are here for my return listeners. Thank you for coming back. It truly means the world to me. Y'all are the reason I do what I do. You get me motivated on days when I feel like, screw this. I don't want to work out. I want to order pizza and wings. Not saying I never do that, but y'all really motivate me to keep going strong as well. So I just want to thank you for that and thank you for just coming back and tuning in. With that being said, if you have not grabbed my free meal plan, please head on over to bones forward slash free meal plan and grab that. You'll put in your email address. It's delivered right to your inbox. It's easy peasy. Take advantage of that. I'll put that link in the show notes. With that being said, let's talk about push up. Most people at one time in their life, maybe it was gym class Maybe it was the military. Maybe it was, I don't know. Any there's Chances are you've done a push-up. Chances are you've done several push-ups. And love them or hate them, there is a big benefit to them. Obviously, you can do them anywhere, so that's a huge benefit. Whether you're traveling, whether you don't have a gym, like whatever, you can always do push-ups because you don't need anything except your body. Another advantage to them is they actually are a really good workout. Now, just pumping out a couple push-ups isn't probably going to do much for you, but there are ways to increase the difficulty of it and to also kind of target some different muscle group sets. So that's the first thing I want to talk about is what are the different types of push-ups, at least the main types, because there are a billion different push-ups. So I'm just going to kind of cover some general basics. All push-ups are going to work your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. That's just the name of the game. However, there are certain types that place more focus on one of those muscle groups. So I just kind of want to preface with that. So with the diamond push-ups, they do place more emphasis on the triceps. Now, with any push-up, you want to make sure your form is good. That means you don't want to be sagging your butt. You don't want to have your butt stuck up in the air. You want your body to be straight as a board. The next thing is you want to have your hand placement directly beneath your shoulders. Now, if you're doing like a wide grip or a diamond push-up, Obviously, they're not going to be directly beneath your shoulders. They're going to be either kind of towards the center of your body or away from the center of your body. But what I mean is you don't want your hand way out in front of your shoulder, like even with your head. And you also don't want it way back to where your chest is. You want those in line with your shoulders. That's going to help avoid a lot of wrist problems. The second thing is you want to keep your elbows nice and tucked. In other words, don't flare those elbows really wide. I mean, most all exercises, you never want to flare the elbows, and this is true with push-ups. Now, if you can't do any push-ups, then start off doing them on your knees. So just keep your knees on the floor and just press up basically your upper body. Another way to do it is you can use a counter. You can get at an angle and push up off a counter. And what it's going to do is it's not going to be as much resistance, so you'll be able to do them easier. You can also just use a wall leaning up against a wall and doing push-ups against the wall. These are all great ways to start doing them if you struggle with them. And how often should you do them? Well, push-ups, it's not like just doing push-ups every day. You're going to overwork the muscles because you're not doing like eight or nine exercises where you're breaking the muscle down so much so that it needs time to heal. So don't be afraid of doing them every day. You're not going to hurt anything. And I recommend doing them a couple times a day and setting a timer for two minutes. Now, during this time, you don't have to do push-ups for the solid two minutes, but you only want to rest for 10 seconds or less. So for example, let's say I set a timer for two minutes and for the first 15 seconds, I do push-ups. Then I need to take a break. So I rest for 10 seconds until the 25 second mark then I pump out as many more as I can. So let's say I get to, you know, 40 seconds and I can't do any more. Well, then I take another 10 second break and I continue this process until the two minutes is up. If you want to do more than that, awesome, but minimum, I would say two minutes. And I would do this twice a day. I would space it out a little bit just so you're kind of more fresh going into it. So maybe once in the morning, once at night, or at least give yourself like an hour in between. 
So this is a way to start building them up and then do them every day. Give yourself 30 days using this method. You're going to see your push-ups increase. Now, back to the different types. So you've got diamond again, which is with your hands together, and that's going to primarily target the triceps. So this is a very effective way to do that. The wide grip, which is your arms are way out to the sides, is going to place more emphasis on your shoulders. You're really going to feel it in that. If you have shoulder issues, I don't recommend doing these. And then the regular one is going to put more emphasis on the chest. Now, there are a lot of things you can do to increase or decrease the intensity. Obviously, you can always just increase how many you're doing. That's always going to increase the intensity. But maybe you want to do something different. You can put your feet up on a chair and do them. That's going to put more emphasis on the upper chest. It's also going to be just a little bit harder to do them because you're fighting gravity even more. You can also do something a little bit different where rather than your feet up on a chair, you put your hands up on the chair and do push-ups. Again, it's just going to hit a little bit differently. So don't feel like you always have to do the same type when you're going through this routine. Change it up. Maybe do one in the morning, one at night. Then the next day, do you know a different variation. Keep it different. Keep it exciting and have some fun with it. I mean, we think that fitness has to be like very rote and just the grind and oh, I got to get this workout in. But I mean, have some fun with it. Challenge your spouse to it or your roommate or a friend and see who can do more and make a game out of it. Make a bet out of it. You know, the loser has to do dishes or whatever, you know, have some fun with it. If you've got kids, get them involved. That's the great thing about pushups is they're so simple to do and you can do them anywhere and anybody can at least make an attempt at it. So, you know, start where you're at. Don't feel overwhelmed if, you know, you can only do a couple pushups. So what? It's no different than any other type of exercise. You don't just, you know, go in the gym for the first time ever and bench press 300 pounds. You have to work up to it. It's the same way with push-ups. Don't feel bad because you struggle just doing a few push-ups. Like, it's normal. Like, it is normal not to just be able to get down and hammer out a ton of push-ups. So give yourself some grace and start practicing. Another great thing you can do with push-ups is implement them into your regular workout routine. So maybe you're at the gym, maybe you're, you know, working out at the home gym, however you're doing it, and you do two exercises. Then get down and do two minutes worth of push-ups, then jump back into your exercises. You know, it's going to be two things. It's going to obviously increase the intensity of your overall workout, but it's also going to keep your heart rate elevated more because the push-ups are definitely going to get your heart rate up and it's going to keep it up during that quote unquote, rest period, even though you're not really resting, you're doing pushups, but you're resting from the actual exercises. So it's going to keep that heart rate elevated, which is going to result in burning more calories. And you're just going to have that much better of a workout. So that's another thing you can do with pushups to kind of increase the intensity of your overall workout. Another thing you can do is combine up the different types of pushups. So, you know, maybe you set your timer for two minutes and let's say you take, I don't know, three or four breaks throughout that two minutes. Well, each time after you come back from a break, do a different variation. So, you know, maybe you start off doing regular, then you take that 10 second break. Then you do the wide grip, then you take a 10 second break. Then you do the diamond, then you take a 10 second break. Then you do the feet up on the chair. So like change it up. It doesn't have to be the same exact kind of push up for that whole duration of the two minutes. Again, keep it interesting, keep it fresh. Just do something a little bit different that's fun. All right, I hope this helps. I hope it gives you some good ideas for how to start doing push-ups or how to start doing more push-ups. Again, consistency, just like with everything when it comes to fitness, is key. So make sure you're doing them every day. All right, if you need a plan, like you're tired of guessing, you're tired of just going, what am I, you know, how am I going to work out? What should my plan be? What should I eat? Blah, blah, blah. Go check out my coaching, bonestobulk.com forward slash coaching. I do eight, 12, and 16 week coaching packages. And what I do is I sit down with you over Zoom and we talk about your life, your lifestyle, foods you like, what equipment you have available. Maybe you only have some dumbbells and a bench at home and that's all you have. Cool. I can create a workout plan and a meal plan that is catered to you, that is specifically designed for you. After that initial meet, I go back to the drawing board, I come up with a plan over the next couple days, then we meet again and I detail it out with you. We talk about it, any questions you have. From there, I meet with you on a weekly basis over Zoom and depending on how many weeks you scheduled with me, we meet each week and we discuss your wins, your losses, we make changes to it. I adjust your workout so that as you improve, the workouts change with you and I give you a good solid base to then 
take your fitness to the level you want. That's the key. You've got to have that solid foundation. You shouldn't have to have a trainer forever because then it just becomes a crutch, but you need sometimes that foundation to be set, and that's what I really try to do. So if you're interested in that, again, I'll link that in the show notes, but bonestobulk.com forward slash coaching, and you can check that out. All right, with that being said, remember, no matter what walls you're facing, what things you're coming up against, you can accomplish any goal that you set your mind to. You've got this. 